3D printing without a hustle. Today I'm reviewing the Ammo 3 Pro coming up on Zachary 3D Prints. Hello, this is Zachary from Zachary 3D Prints bringing you how to reviews and many more things about 3D printing. If you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing. So, like I mentioned in the intro, I'm going to review this Ender 3 Pro. It's a 3D printer from Core Reality and it's running currently for my InMove humanoid robot project. Here is the torso and I'm still 3D printing parts from it. But during the print I'm going to do a review about my Ender 3 Pro. So like I mentioned in the intro, today I'm going to review my Ender 3 Pro from Car Reality. It's a machine that I have now for something like a year. Uh, when I just took it out of the box, there were some things that you need to assemble before you could start it, just like the CTC Prusa i3 MK2 3D printer. Uh, there are some parts that are pre-installed, you only need to put on that frame, uh, also this part. There are some parts that you need to install, but that is not that difficult. Um, it's all with the, uh, the aluminium parts. Also, um, what a great thing is all plastic parts, uh, injection molded plastic parts, not 3D printed like uh, the uh, CTC Prusa i3. 3D printer, uh, or it is from aluminium, or it is from uh, injected molded plastic. There are also some electronic uh, parts in it. In the in the, in the casing, just underneath the heat pad, there are some uh, electronics. Uh, like in the older version, the Ender 3, I guess, the fan was on top of it, but now it's underneath the 3D printer. So when some uh, particles from plastic are coming off the heat pad, now it doesn't get into the fan and also into your mainboard from your 3D printer. You don't want to have that. Uh, also wanted to try a fan cover, but I didn't need to do that. As you can see, this is a great example. My uh, print is ready. As you can see, um, this is a great example to do right now on my review. There is a magnetic print bed on this Ender 3 Pro. It's easy to use. Um, one extra tip, because I'm using this machine for a year now. Uh, when it is not getting sticky enough and it gets smoother because you're always printing on the same place, one thing that you can do to get it more stickier again, uh, some people are saying, oh, you have to use a glue stick. But I did use some other thing and that's some, not, not this thing, but I used from out of my toolbox some very gross sandpaper. I'm not going to do it now because you need to clean it with soap and then it's all sticky again. But I'm using this and then I'm going over it like that and then in the other direction. Because I don't want to throw away a magnetic it's bad that is brand new. So I'm going to get it off. Just like that. It's not that difficult. Use the scalpel with the
without a hustle, like I said. Because I'm printing 3D parts from for the in move, I'm going to continue that. So, like I mentioned, it, it's easy to use and it's a great 3D printer. I did have some other opinions a few weeks ago because the, the stock hot end that was on my 3D printer was having some issues. Uh, I also did a hot end fix a few weeks ago. I will put the link in the uh, upper right corner. It's an easy to do fix, but when you are having problems again, then you might do the Micro Swiss All Metal Hot Ends Exchange. I'll also put a link in the video. Um, and I also installed a bullseye fan duct from Thingy first. I will put a link in the description uh, that you can also uh, 3D print this part yourself. It's an easy one to use. I have to mention there are some very uh, different parts in the, uh, in, in the file from Thingiverse, but I will uh, mention which kind of parts you need to 3D print that you can use it. So but now we are going back to the uh, review of this 3D printer. So the heat pad, it has a, a volume of uh, 22 by 22 by 25 centimeters. Uh, you can print quite a lot uh, big parts. Uh, the biggest part that I printed is not here at this moment, but it was the T800 skull from, uh, of course, Terminator. It was that big, so it could print pretty well. Uh, it has a nice, cool uh, L LCD display. It's not in multicolor, it's in the blue-white color settings. You have a, a dial knob where you press to confirm it. Sometimes you have to be careful because uh, when you are twisting it, you feel the little little thingy and then um, you can continue uh, dialing on that button. You can also use different kind of ways to put G-code on your 3D printer. You can use the USB cable but you can also use a uh, micro SD card, which is standard on your Android 3 Pro. Some people are recommending it to exchange it for a brand new one. Also, you can use, when you have your OctoPrint attached, you can use that way to upload your files into your 3D printer and then start it with 3D printing. Also, the, the X carriage it's running smoothly it's a it, it's on an a, a, a aluminium beam uh, 2020 i guess uh, it's it's sturdy it's nice you have this uh, the, the wheels that run through the uh, v slots on the sides it's very steady you have on the ender 3 pro and also on the other other ender you have this uh, lead screw it's not a normal lead screw, it is just a lead screw that is for 3D printing. Um, I had some other ones on the, on the CTC Prusa uh, 3D printer. It's just a, a metal rod that you can also use some normal nuts on. Um, this, however, this, this is running much smoother. Also, when you are disabling the steppers and you need to work on your uh, your uh, hot end or your X carriage, you, you just take it and you can just lift it higher and lower it without any problems. Also, you have this uh, the, the coupling on, on the on the stepper motor, and also what you hear that is the sound it makes. It doesn't make any. Uh, loud noise it's it's quite quiet there are some upgrades you can do on on, on these kind of ender machines 
uh, with some silent bearings, some silent boards, and then you can even hear less and less. Maybe on, on this channel I'm going to also do those kind of upgrades because I like the Ana 3 Pro quite a, a lot. I always was a great fan of the Prusa 3D printers. Like you can see, I'm not owning a Prusa uh, 3D printer yet at this moment, but if you are having enough money to buy a 3D printer to start with, I really can recommend the Ana 3 Pro. If you are having some money over, then buy also the Micro Swiss or Metal End. Then you have less problems in the future. Also, when I do see a lot of uh, things happen in the 3D printing community that are using the Ender 3 Pro or the Ender 3, uh, they switching the um, magnetic bed for a glass bed or a other like uh, spring sheet uh, steel uh, or even other possibilities to print your 3D prints on. Like you can see, I don't need to use any glue stick, I don't need to use any hairspray, I just take it off, make it clean, put it back on and I start with 3D printing again. That is how easy it comes. Also, uh, one other thing that I see also a lot of times the Bowden uh, tube, the PTFE tube. It's this one I'm still using. It's still the, the stock one. Um, I also like to upgrade it to the uh, to the more advanced one, the Capricot uh, Bowden uh, tube. It's uh, better. It's steadier. It's um, it's it's a better PTFE tube for uh, 3D printing. Uh, this one runs pretty fine. Also, one other thing that I need to mention that um, I exchanged the extruder part for a metal one because the standard that you will get by your Ender 3 Pro is from plastic, but this this one is from uh, metal. I did have some spare so I could use it and it runs very good. I also have like I uh, show you now in a little short video, Yoda is, is uh, turning around. Then you can also see that the, the uh, extruder is working. And it's also a nice design feature. All white metal parts, uh, white plastic printed parts were before I did the hot end uh, exchange. So the quality is a little bit uh, rougher, but it's pretty nice. Also on the Ender 3 you'll get some uh, tools like uh, Allen keys, you're getting a uh, spatula, you get some, uh, some little um, uh, spanners and also a screwdriver and a current tool. This one I bought for 12 euros on a uh, shop here in the Netherlands but for the Ender 3 Pro you will get this one. I tried to use it, but I'm too much attached to this one. This one is just for uh, showing purpose only. <laughs> so, on top of it, you have the spool holder. It's still there. Um, I don't have any problems at this moment with it. And as you can see, I run the wire, the, 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 the filament through this, uh, this, this little bracket that I printed. All things that I printed on my Ender 3 Pro, I will put a link in the description to the thingy first pages. So, I also have the OctoPrint uh, server underneath. I'm not attached it yet. Uh, I need to tweak some things and then I can install it as well. Every print that I, whether I use a Prusa Slicer 2.1, or uh, Cura Slicer 4.3, it doesn't really matter, every print is running quite well. On this Ender 3 Pro, you can print different kind of filaments. Uh, I'm printing now with PLA filament from Philrite, 
but you can also use different kind of ABS or uh, TPE or other filament brands because I'm using the Micro Swiss All Metal Hot End. So that was it for today's video. The review was about the Industry Pro. I will put the link in the description. Then you can buy it from Amazon. That being said, thanks for watching. Please like this video. And when you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and I will see you next. Happy 3D printing, Zachary 3D Print. Bye bye.